Hey guys, welcome to the another topic of discussion today. That is a part two of surveillance sepsis campaign guidance 2021. In the first part, we have discussed about your screening of the sepsis patients and how will you initially resuscitate that patients. So now we are going to discuss the hemodynamic part and the monitoring and the ventilation part. First, we will be seeing the hemodynamic monitoring part. So as the patient come with sepsis, initial resuscitation fluid of choice is your crystalloids. Crystalloid should be considered as the first line fluid of choice. Of the crystalloids, we balanced crystalloid solutions is considered as the first line over normal saline. Okay, as the initial resuscitation measures. Suppose in this patient, even you are using a crystalloids. If you are using large amount of crystalloids to achieve a map of more than 65, in this patient, albumin can be considered as a second line fluid uh, as a second line transmission strategy for maintaining the mean arterial pressures okay and recommendation in survey sepsis guidelines against the use of starch colloid starch or gelatin so you should not use gelatin as starch for the maintenance of your hemodynamics so crystalloids with balanced crystalloid solution is an ideal fluid of choice so suppose if you are uh, seeing the patient and patient having hypotension you are given enough amount of fluids and you are not able to maintain the target achieve map of 65 millimeter of mercury then another next you will be going with vasopressors so vasopressor is another line what is the first line vasopressor use how will you use uh, so you can receive the patient anywhere either in the trauma or either in your ward okay so whenever the patient is receiving the patient will be having some peripheral channel or something and if the patient is having hypotension it's not resolved with your crystalloids then vasopressor can be started even in the peripheral line also you should not wait for until the central line to be in place for starting the vasopressor can be started in the peripheral line and most common first line of vasopressor used is noradrenaline so noradrenaline is the first line vasopressor of choice okay if vasopressor noradrenaline is not available suppose in peripheral setting where noradrenaline is not available in that case dopamine or adr can be used as a second as, as a first line drugs mostly norepinephrine should be used in case it, if it is not available in the peripheral setting dopamine and adr can be used as a first line drugs okay so in patients you have seen uh, started noradrenaline and the noradrenaline dosage is increasing trend in this patient and now the dosage uh, reached is 0.25 to 0.5 microgram per kg per minute if the dosage crosses 0.25 max per kg per minute then you have to add another vasopressor to maintain the map okay another vasopressor second line vasopressor of choice is vasopressin so vasopressin is the second line vasopressor of choice first is noradrenaline and if if you are not able to achieve with the, your map with your noradrenaline or vasopressin then then the third line vasopressor of choice is adrenaline adrenaline should be considered as a third line reserve in this patient okay so next if you are used noradrenaline or epinephrine vasopressor in this patient the cardiac status everything is normal and there is no congestive cardiac failure or no arrhythmias suppose if the patient is having some cardiac dysfunction cardiac dysfunction patient with sepsis or septic shock first line drug of choice you have started is norepinephrine okay so the second line drug of choice in this cardiac dysfunction patient is dobutamine or epinephrine so in this kind of patients then you have to start dobuta or epinephrine to support the heart to maintain the adequate map so if you are starting the vasopressor itself then you have to take a invasive arterial line bp monitoring is necessary for 
continuous bp recording monitor okay invasive bp cannulation with radial artery or femoral artery whichever can is visible you have to take cannulation invasive bp monitoring should be carried out to maintain a target map more than 65 millimeter of mercury so these are the main changes in the hemodynamic crystalloid should be used of the balanced crystalloids is the initial fluid of choice over normal saline and another if you are using large volume of crystalloids albumin can be used as a strategy to for transfusion to maintain the hemodynamics against the use of starch and gelatin can peripheral line you can start norad and the vasopressor initial first line vasopressor is noradrenaline and in the peripheral setting if it is not available can use dopamine or adr second line vasopressor of choice is vasopressin and third line drug of choice is adrenaline if the patient have some cardiac dysfunction then norepinephrine is the first line drug of choice and second line should be considered either dobutamine or epinephrine to maintain a adequate hemodynamics monitoring okay these are the vasopressors and uh, hemodynamic monitoring related changes in serving sepsis camp and guidelines next we will be seeing ventilation part okay okay guys next part is a ventilation part in ventilation part actually in sepsis patients other hypoxemic respiratory failure there is no there is insufficient evidence against conservative oxygen targets there is no oxygen target you have to maintain achiever pao2 of this level and maintain fao2 of this level there is no target level there is insufficient evidence against the oxygen target level but if the patient get intubated if the intubated patient is there there they have some recommendation like low tidal volume ventilation should be used in this patient low tidal volume 6 ml per kg is used over high tidal volume 10 ml per kg so low tidal volume ventilation should be used and another is peep in moderate to severe ards patient higher peep is recommended over lower peep values higher peep values should be used over lower peep values and you have to achieve a peep plat we can uh, allow up to 30 so a peep plat should be less than 30 okay this achievement should be carry a peep plat uh, should not go beyond 30 centimeter okay next is in in this patient if intubated intermittent nmba boluses intermittent neuromuscular blocking agent bolus should be used over continuous infusion you should not give continuous uh, uh, infusion of the block uh, neuromuscular blocking drugs like vecuronium or anything over 24 hours period. intermittent boluses have to be given in that patients okay and another is recruitment maneuver regarding recruitment maneuver your traditional recruitment maneuvers like CPAP uh, 30 to 40 centimeter of water for 30 to 40 seconds or and traditional maneuvers had to be carried out whereas they told against the use of incremental peep incremental peep strategy should not be carried out incremental peep because it was increased 28 day mortality rate so incremental peep should be carried out recruitment traditional manuals like CPAP that methods have to be carried out and prone ventilation for more than 12 hours a day is recommended according to surviving new sepsis can in more than 12 hours can be carried out okay and in these patients actually restrictive fluid strategy versus liberal fluid strategy if the patient present initial point to the emergency department where liberal fluid strategy had to be followed out if the patient having signs of hypoperfusion or then you have to carry it out if the patient intubated and if the lung uh, the patient's article resuscitated before then restrictive fluid therapy have to be carried out okay next last but not the least if the ventilatory strategies have been failed in the patient with ARDS you will not be able to achieve the adequate oxygenation then venous ECMO is the 
we know venus ecmo can be carried out this is the ideal preferred choice if the, if the patient is intubated uh, and uh, if it is not improving oxygenation patient having end organ damage everything is going on then veno venous ecmo can be considered and according to the uh, strategies use of high flow nasal oxygen is better over niv so consider the usage of high flow nasal oxygen therapy in sepsis patient over non invasive ventilation and there is insufficient evidence to make niv is better than invasive ventilation which is better this is not actually shown because studies was less there is insufficient evidence to prove that niv is better than invasive ventilation if the patient is put on invasive ventilation then these are the targets low volume high p p plat less than 30 intermittent nmea boluses and recruitment maneuvers can be carried out with traditional methods have to be carried out prone ventilation for more than 12 hours and if it all fails then veno venous ecmo is the another ventilation so today we have discussed hemodynamic monitoring and ventilation so uh, other left is actually two things additional therapies what are the additional therapies in sepsis patients according to surviving sepsis government guidelines and uh, last is your uh, long term follow up in sepsis patient patients what are the things have to be seen and want to follow up these two will be discussed on the next class okay thank you guys thank you if you like my videos please subscribe my channel so it will motivate me for doing more videos for you guys thank you guys